Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and today we're going to continue our investigation uh, into the Paleo-Atlantic shorelines of the East Coast and the formation date of the Carolina Bays. Um, you know, I really do think that we see a direct correlation here, and uh, it's it's definitely something that needs to be taken into account when considering the, the formation date for Carolina Bays. Uh, so to, just to quickly recap, um, that correlation relates to marine oxygen isotopes uh, that are found in the Greenland ice cores and the, and the Antarctic ice cores. Uh, and they, we can see here these peaks in marine oxygen isotopes. These relate to sea level stages. Uh, and the sea level stages relate to Paleo-Atlantic shorelines. Uh, so basically, one million years ago, this formation right here was the coast of you know, the East Coast. And everything to the east of that would have been affected by ocean water. Uh, then the sea levels retreated and ice ages did their thing uh, up until about 400,000 years ago when sea levels once again rose to almost that same point, but a little bit shallower, a little bit lower. Um, and right here, we would have been at uh, the, the Talba formation, which is 42 feet above our current sea level. Uh, and again, that was 400,000 years ago. And then once again, sea levels went out, ice ages did their thing. Uh, up until 125,000 years ago, which would have been right in this area right here. Um, and so, so basically the correlation is that anything that we find in the terrain in these areas could be dated to at least sometime between these different peaks, between these different stages. Uh, and so we need to look at that and relate them to where we find the Carolina Bays. And that could help us identify a better time frame for, for their formation. So let's go to the, uh, let's go back to Google Earth. We'll go back to Google Earth here. Um, now I have been looking at this area specifically. Um, there's a few reasons why I chose this area. I've mentioned them in my first video, uh, mainly because we actually see this process happening right now. Okay, so this is the area that we have been looking at. Um, but let's go ahead and look at a few other places um, along the along the coastline uh, that can give us, you know, a better idea of what what I'm trying to say here. So let me go and click off of this. And we'll go to stop number one, not too far up the beach. Uh, we're moving up into North Carolina here. Um, let's see, where are we close to? We're close to Kings Grant. Again, this is along the, the uh, coastline here. Um, there's Myrtle Grove here, uh, Wrightsville Beach. Uh, so these are all some, some familiar areas, Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, all some familiar areas here. Uh, but let's go ahead and look. I mean, and you can see it's heavily populated. Lots and lots and lots of people here. Um, but let's go and click on the LIDAR for this area, if I can find it. And we'll scoot into this area, let it load up, uh, and we can already go and see. I mentioned before that Michael Davies has marked uh, these as being Carolina Bays, uh, and he's fit them with these, these elliptical, elliptical um, overlays. Uh, but, you know, as you can see in this in this example right here, you know, we, we see that there's a direct, you know, we see where the paleo, paleo Atlantic shoreline is, you know, just by looking at these sharp contrasts and colors because of the, the way that the LIDAR overlay is here. Um, but most importantly is the the um, height above sea level. Uh, we can see in this area right here that we're under 30 feet. We're in like the 24, 25 foot range. Uh, and then right here, right where we see this quick color change, uh, it jumps from, you know, 20 something feet up to above 30 feet uh, and then up to above 40 feet. And we start to see some well-defined Carolina bays in this area right here. Uh, so again, like I've been saying before, anything under than 30 feet, we're, we're, you know, really lacking in Carolina bays. There are a few, I'll, I'll make a video about those another day. Uh, more than likely that has to do with subsidence uh, in that area. Uh, but, but, you know, as you can clearly see in this picture or in this area, uh, there are no Carolina bays under 30 feet, you know, and again, keep in mind that 125,000 years ago, this area was covered in ocean water as well as 400,000 years ago. So two times in the past million years, um, there, there has been ocean over this area, but this area right here, that's over 40 feet. Uh, has been free of ocean water for the past million years. Um, so again, I think we're definitely looking at, 
you know, a time frame of between 1 million years and 400,000 years for the formation date. Uh, otherwise, we would find Carolina Bays in this area right here, and we just don't see any. You know, if I click off, you know, you can see this is high and dry. This is all people's neighborhoods. You know, this is, you know, schools and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, you click on that LIDAR and it tells you the story. You know, there's nothing here. No Carolina Bays here, but they have some really well-defined Carolina Bays above 40 feet in this area. Um, and so this this would tell me anyways that, you know, these bays had to have formed sometime between 1 million years and 400,000 years. Uh, let's go ahead and go to another place. Let me click off of this LIDAR. Let's go ahead and go to stop two, a little bit farther north. Um, and where it looks like we're heading, we just passed Camp Lejeune. Uh, and we actually see some really good Carolina Bays uh, without the use of LIDAR in this area. Um, let's see, here's uh, Moorhead City, familiar, Newport. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the LIDAR here. And again, you can see that this is high and dry right now. This is this is probably some swampy, swampy areas over here. Uh, but this whole area, this is, you know, where people live, their vacation there. Uh, and let's find the LIDAR first. There it is. And we'll scoot in. You can see where Michael Davis has marked some of these as Carolina Bays already. Um, and here's a couple really good examples of what I'm just talking about here. And, and again, one of the reasons why I started down in Myrtle Beach was because we saw the erosion happening at the beach line. Uh, but here it looks like it's been hit a couple times. Uh, we're, we're under 30 feet here. Um, now, once we start moving up, this, this blue line, this blue-green transition is right at 30 feet. And so 125,000 years ago, this would have been being affected by ocean water. Now, I don't know how long this, this peak was. I don't know how long the coastline was at 30 feet above our current coastline. Uh, Judging by this, it doesn't look like it was that long. You know, our current coastline has been being worked over for about 6,000 years or so. Um, this looks like it wasn't quite as long as that. Uh, but we definitely see that these Carolina Bays are heavily eroded right at that 30-foot mark, um, and which tells me that they were probably affected by ocean water 400,000 years ago. But And then and again, briefly, you know, for, for an extended amount of time, 125,000 years ago, but they're still here. They're still in this area. It must not have been that long or that heavily affected. Uh, while anything under 30 feet uh, has been completely wiped clean of, of any Carolina bays. Um, so, when, and also in this area, we don't have anything over 40 feet. Nothing's over 40 feet here. So we don't see any of those like super well-defined bays like we saw in our first example. All right, let me click up to stop number three. And we're going to go kind of way up. I think we're heading up into the Virginia area. And let me, this is, I mean, this is definitely, you see, this is all farmland. It's all high and dry. Um, here's Rocky Hook. Um, let me scan out a little bit just to check where we are. Uh, we're still in North, uh, we're kind of close to the Virginia, North Carolina border. Uh, let's scroll back in. But again, I want you to see that this is all really high and dry. This is, you know, now it is anyways, and it's all farmland. Um, most of it is. And let's go ahead and click on some LIDAR in this area. Let that load up. And we can actually, I mean, just even before it finishes loading, you can see that there's a string of Carolina Bays here uh, and nothing in this whole area over here. And this whole area is below, it's below 20 feet. Um, in elevation, you know, from our current coast, uh, I'm sorry, it's above 20 feet from our current coastline. Um, but you know, still 125,000 years ago, this, this, you know, quick line, um, was the coastline, you know, pretty much goes from 20 something feet up to 30 something feet and then up to 40 something feet, uh, really, really, really quickly. And, you know, again, we see some really, well, we see some good correct Carolina bays here. Um, and these are all between that 42 feet and that 30 feet in elevation. Um, but again, nothing down here, nothing below 30 feet. This area down here should be covered, completely covered in Carolina Bays if they were created during the Younger Dryas 13,000 years ago. 
Um, you know, again, the coastline right here was 125,000 years ago, and that was the last time that seas had risen that high. Uh, so, so there's again that direct correlation that if if the bays were created at the Younger Dryas, then this area should have some. We got some right here. We got some right here. Um, why none right here? Well, it's because they they were some there. They've been washed away over the past 125,000 years, um, or at least at 125,000 years. Uh, and, you know, if we keep moving up, you see as it gets darker here, it's getting a little higher in elevation. And we have a couple really well-defined Carolina bays up here that are over 41 feet. Uh, and so this this little area right here has been exposed since, you know, for the past million years. Again, guys, I know this isn't a popular, um, you know, discussion, but, uh, you know, this is this is what it is. And and, you know, there is a direct correlation between the marine oxygen isotopes found in the ice cores uh, to the Paleoatlantic shorelines uh, to where the Carolina bays are. That's it's a direct relationship. You know, this is this is solid evidence uh, that the bays have to be older than the younger dryas. And these Paleoatlantic shorelines suggest a formation date of some time between 1 million years and 400,000 years. And it's probably somewhere in the middle there. Uh, we definitely should be, you know, if we're going to solve this, uh, you know, we have two mysteries here to solve. We have the Younger Dryas and whatever created these Carolina Bays. Uh, I think we're looking at two separate events now. Um, I don't want to confuse the two, you know, now, the, unless somebody has some better evidence to kind of push this, back into the area of the Younger Dryas, um, you know, because there is a lot of evidence. We've I've been talking about it now for a few years. Once there is evidence that contradicts that, then we have to put that into account. And if it's enough evidence to remove it from, from the hypothesis, then that's what we have to do. And um, again, now I, I don't want to muddy the waters anymore uh, with with confusing Carolina Bays with the Younger Dryas. Now, I'm not trying to take away anything from the Younger Dryas event. Um, as, as a matter of fact, and I've explained this in a few of the comments here and there, um, that by removing the Carolina Bays from a YD impact event, uh, it really helps clarify that. It, it will help in the long run. Um, the Carolina Bays being incorporated into the Younger Dryas impact has caused quite a bit of controversy in the past few years. And, and if this is enough evidence to remove this from that discussion, then that's what needs to happen. Um, and then we can focus on looking at both of them. We can focus looking at the Younger Dryas as being its own thing and the Carolina Bays as being a completely separate but just as interesting event. Um, so, so guys, you know, again, look at the evidence, you know, do your own research. And, um, and again, if, if, if this does in fact remove them from the younger dryest, then let's do that. And, and let's start to, to move forward. We've got to move forward with these things. And so guys, I appreciate you watching today and, um, we'll catch you next time. Bye.